you know, I rushed to the house and got to the house and, uh, it was so deep in my yard. I couldn't even pull my new truck in the driveway. I had to park it out on the road, on the side of the road and, uh, walk through knee deep water up to the house. What's up guys. My name's Derek. Uh, everybody knows me as dirt. Uh, I'm from Liberty, Texas and committed. Uh, this is my 94 GMC Sonoma called Sep Eternal. My dad is a, um, he's a cowboy. I mean, we live on like 10 acres of land. We had 35 acres beside us. Uh, he, he recently sold that, but I mean, he has horses, he ropes. I mean, I used to be the, I used to do the cowboy thing. Uh, it's hilarious because you look at me, you know, like where I'm from, Raywood, you know what I mean? It's the country. And then you look at like the old pictures from when I was a kid, you know, and stuff. Uh, with my dad at rodeos and you know riding and stuff and and then now I'm all tattooed up and my sister she's the same way she's all tattooed up and uh, and my dad's he's been in law enforcement for 40 years so it's like that we're the totally opposite you know he's he's you know the law and I'm I look like a hood rat like whenever I was probably nine years old I got my first dirt bike so I, I had dirt bikes my whole time growing up since I was a kid growing up, dirt bikes, four wheelers, go-karts. Whenever I was like probably 14 before I got my first vehicle, I was into the tuner cars, uh, Honda Civics and stuff. Luckily, my dad didn't buy me one of those. He got me a, a 94 Chevrolet Stepside single cab, old farm truck that, man, it was wore out. It had like 340 something thousand miles on it. Uh, it had a decent paint job uh, for how old it was in an old farm truck, but uh, I took it and uh, started getting into the show trucks. I went and bought uh, a 90 GMC Stepside single cab that was bagged by Mind of Metal. Uh, it had, uh, I think it had 20s on it. A guy here in Liberty painted it. It was, uh, he did House of Colors uh, purple on top with a limetime green flame with skulls airbrushed in it. And it was a Cadillac uh, Desert Sand Metallic Pearl at the bottom. Shaved everything on it, put 22s on it, had it all rebagged. Uh, he did all the interior. It was a really nice truck. It was actually supposed to get shot for uh, for trucking at Show Off one year. And uh, I drove it to Show Off and they were gonna shoot it well. The bottom fell out, it started pouring down raining. And uh, I drove it home. The guy told me, he's like, come back tomorrow and we'll shoot it tomorrow. Well, I woke up that morning, I didn't feel like going nowhere, so I didn't drive it back. So it never got shot for trucking. It was terrible. I love the full size trucks. I mean, the the 88 to 98 step size, that's, that's my truck. I mean. Those are my favorite trucks out of any truck. The reason why I bought this truck is because I got it for a really good deal for one, and I knew the truck was built right. And I had been trying to get this truck for three or four years from, uh, from Rook, and no regrets. I sent him a message one time and asked him, I said, what do you want for the truck? Well, he want, I think he, I don't forgot what he wanted for it, but it was more than I was willing to pay for it. It was a good deal, but I didn't have the money. I didn't have that kind of money to buy it at the time. And I really didn't want to pay that much money for, you know, for a toy. So uh, it rocked on for, I think, another two years. And then Brody posted a picture of the truck. And just jokingly, I said, uh, I said, for sale. And he said, uh, he said, let me get with Rook, but possibly. And uh, he messaged me back and he told me what they wanted for it. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll pay that for it. You know, I mean, it was a deal you couldn't pass up, you know, everything that's done to the truck. So I ended up going and buying it. I think the first show that I took it to after I bought it was uh, LST. 2018 was the first show that's whenever i was hanging out with committed and you know i just parked with them met everybody talked hung out i know a lot of people in committed from uh from the club whenever they were in severed ties uh like red uh cody bobby uh all the beaumont chapter people and i knew some houston chapter people so i knew that that was the club that i if i was going to be in any club i knew that was the club that i wanted to be in Whenever I bought, after I bought the truck, I, it had a few bugs that needed to be worked out. Um, it had some serious leaks on the engine that needed to be addressed. Uh, so I took it and had that stuff fixed. Um, I took it to Junior's Upholstery in Conroe. He took all of the brown out of the inside and uh, the headliner, the carpet, the seats, and redid everything in uh, black vinyl with the uh, blue reverse stitching, did the suede headliner, uh, the seats the same way in the back, did the console, covered it uh, black with the reverse blue stitching, uh, black carpet. Black was just the thing. I, I had a buddy that had a blue stepside Chevrolet and uh, his truck was like a 
like a sky blue, real pretty baby blue, and it was all black interior, and I always knew. I was like, if I had a blue truck, it had to have black interior. Patrick Reed, uh, my man with Mad Concepts, did the paint on the truck uh, in San Leon. Uh, awesome painter, man. Couldn't ask for a better painter. Great dude. Uh, at the first of the year, this year, I uh, brought it to Patrick, and the truck was originally blue, um, but it, it wasn't a color that could be matched because it had like, I think eight different pearls in it. And two of the pearls were discontinued. Um, so he took a piece of the panel on the truck, brought to his painter, I mean, his paint mixed in place, and uh, they matched it the best they could, which was an exact match. Uh, so he had to repaint the whole truck. All of the bodywork in the rear was starting to pop through, uh, lifting and stuff. So Jonathan Barron, uh, addressed the bodywork. Uh, he took everything down to bare metal, uh, straightened everything out on the truck so we know everything's legit now and we won't have no problems with it. And then Patrick came in after him and laid down the new blue and then uh, started laying all the graphics. I told him the only color I didn't want in the paint, a graphic would be yellow. And uh, he didn't, he put some yellow in it, but it's just on the hand pinstriping around one of the graphics, which I'm totally fine with that. I, I love, I mean, it, it goes with the color that he did over it. Yeah, the wheels, I ordered the wheels, um, when did I order them? January 9th. Uh, at the time, I think that wheel released with Bond Speed in uh, November. It was a new design wheel that they had. It's the uh, Bond Speed uh, light twist. They are a 22 by eight and a half in the front, 22 by uh, 10 and a half in the rear. Placed the order with him on January the 9th. Well, they had some programming problems, uh, problems building the wheels. It took a little longer than expected to get the wheels, but I mean, I couldn't be happier with the wheel. I got the truck and the wheels one week before Battle in Bama, because I planned on debuting the truck at Battle in Bama, and it come down to the wire, and I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna make Battle in Bama. But luckily, everything worked out perfect. Yeah, it was on the uh, the cover of All Time Low magazine, uh, June of this year. Uh, they shot it at Battle in Bama. Corey Floyd shot it. Awesome dude. Did a great job. It was in front of a, a jet. So that was a really cool shoot. Uh, everything turned out perfect. Uh, the write-up that Rich did was amazing. Outbreak was my Texas debut with the truck. Um, and I talked to Phil at Battle in Bama. He wanted to shoot the truck, but I couldn't stay over till Monday because my wife had to be back at work. The next show, Phil said, well, why don't we shoot it at, uh, at Outbreak? I said, works for me. So I hung around at Outbreak uh, and we shot it Monday at Outbreak. He shot it for trucking. But the truck thing is one thing. I mean, I've been in trucks, into the truck stuff since I was 16 years old. I'm 35 now and I still always gravitate back to the trucks. I've, I've got out of them for a little bit, did the whole motorcycle thing, bought Harleys, bought choppers, sport bikes and it's still, it's always been back to the trucks. It's never, nothing's ever filled that void. Never could own a stock vehicle. Even my wife's car, we just bought her a new car. And I think a week after buying the new car, I went and put 19 inch wheels on it and uh, aftermarket tail lights and do all kind of crazy shit. And you know, well, we, we put uh, red leather seats in the whole car, had all red leather done in it. Uh, we, we actually had that done before we even, we bought the car, sent it off. Uh, didn't even drive the car home, sent it to the upholstery shop, and then picked it up from the upholstery shop and brought it home. Hadn't even made the first payment on it, had paper plates on it. Uh, we just lost it, what was it, last Thursday in the flood. Had water up inside the seats and those freshly red leather seats we had done in it. Uh, so it was a total loss. We actually just went Saturday and bought another one. Same color, same everything, uh, and we're going to do the same thing to it. At the house, uh, I had to work. Wednesday night, you know, so I got off Thursday morning whenever all the storm was coming in. And uh, my mom texted me at like 2.30 in the morning and said that they had water coming in the outdoor kitchen in the shop. And I was like, dang, man, that, that's like during the hurricane, when the hurricane come through two years ago, they had water. That was the first time they had water in the shop and in the, in the outdoor kitchen. So I was panicking. I, it was like 3.30. I, I called Tracy and I told her, I said, uh, look out the window and check on the car. I told her, I said, uh, I said, you know, check the car and how deep's it on the trailer because I keep the truck, the truck and the enclosed trailer. And uh, she said, oh, this, it's starting to go in the car and it's like up to the to the marker lights on the trailer. And I started panicking. I, I started calling my like my coworkers and stuff, texting them, calling them, saying, hey, could you come in, you know, early and relieve me that way I can get to the house. Well, a buddy of mine come in early 
and I rushed to the house and got to the house and uh it was so deep in my yard I couldn't even pull my new truck in the driveway I had to park it out on the road on the side of the road and uh walk through knee-deep water up to the house luckily the house is high so it didn't flood but in my building I had I think a foot of water a foot and a half of water in my building uh and then the trailer had water it started coming in the back in the the enclosed trailer kind of like drops down in the back you know when you pull the truck up in it actually had a little bit of water coming in there jumped in the trailer turned the truck on aired it up and i knew it wasn't going to get in the truck you know with it aired up but luckily i got home in time to get it aired up before it didn't mess the truck if it would have been if it would have been in the driveway or in the building it would have had in the driveway it would have been probably halfway up the truck if not further and then in the building it would have been it would have been probably a foot in the truck. I'm kind of glad that I that I got in the custom truck scene because this is a, a redneck town, hillbilly. You know, I mean, there's it's farming, cows, horses, all that stuff. And I've always been the person that didn't kind of like fit in, you know, with the crowd. I kind of like went in my own direction. You know, I don't listen to everybody around here. You know, it's country, country music, all that stuff. Uh, I listen to heavy metal. You know, I hate following the crowd. You know, I like I like to be different. I want to give a shout out to my wife, Tracy. With, without her patience, I would not be doing this. Without her understanding of the car shows, the spending money, doing crazy shit all the time. Uh, her, my club committed, great bunch of guys. Uh, Patrick Reed and Jonathan Barron uh, for the paint work. Junior's Upholstery for doing the interior. Uh, Brad over at Bond Speed for getting my wheels done did a killer job on them. I mean, the finish on Bond Speeds are outstanding. Delta Cruz, you guys for coming out and doing this for me. If you guys like this interview, everything, uh, like and subscribe to Delta Cruz. These guys are doing an amazing job getting out and interviewing everybody in the scene, bringing everything out again, bringing everything back. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram. It's Delta Cruz. That's pretty much it. Oh, damn, I should have gave uh, Winston Cave a shout out. Yeah, the name uh, Sep Eternal. Uh, it's a name of a uh, album uh, from Bring Me the Horizon. It's like one of my favorite albums, uh, and I like the meaning too. It means uh, everlasting, unchanged. It's kind of like everything in the mini truck stuff. Uh, it goes away, but it'll come back. Like as far as like the graphics, the style of graphics and stuff, the old school graphics, everything goes away and comes back.